When I was asked by Teachers TV to teach a pair of maths masterclasses, I decided to tackle two topics that can be both tricky to teach and that students don't always see the wider point of. They're both topics that it's possible to have a lot of fun with, and I'm hoping that's what this group of Year 10 students from three North London schools will think too. What's the probability that your bus to school will be late tomorrow? What's the probability that David Beckham will walk into your life in the next five years? What's the probability that we'll have an earthquake tonight? What's the probability that I can juggle these three balls for ten seconds without dropping them? Count. One, two, three, four, five, I've been practising. Come on. Mum will be so proud. Oh. You know, life is a game of chance. And it's made up of a series of events that might either happen or they might not happen. What one thing is for sure is that we can use mathematics to help us make the right choices, to maximise our successes and to minimise failure. OK. Now then. Ooh, these look nice. I'd like a volunteer, please. A volunteer. Look at my lovely donuts. Mmm. Krishnan, up you come. Put your clipboard down. Excellent. OK. Choose one of my lovely, sugary, jammy donuts. Mmm. Look good. Do they smell nice? Ooh, it makes you want to lick your lips, doesn't it? Lovely. Well, Christian's going to eat this without licking his lips. I think you can do it. Definitely. Without licking your lips once? Yes. We've got to keep watching him. Who thinks it's likely that he's going to lick his lips? OK, yeah, you I think it's that. likely. OK, then. After three, one, two, three, go for it. Watch him carefully. No licking. Watch him carefully. Oh, that sugar. Watch him carefully. Watch him carefully. Oh, what's your name? Matthew. Oh, become quick. Take a donut. OK. What I'd like you to do is face each other. Take your donut. Right, you eat your donut too, but you can lick your lips and look oh, okay. at him. Lick your lips. Go on. It's that eating him. Lick your lips. Make, put him off. Go on. Lick your lips as much as you can. That's it. Oh, look at that tasty. Oh, look at those lips getting licked. Mm. Has he been practising? <laughs> Try and put him off. Mm. I think he's done really well. Give him a round of applause. You can lick your lips now. That is absolutely fantastic. Take a marshmallow. No, take a handful. Go on. Is it nice? It's lovely. OK, well done. Marshmallows. Excellent. OK. Fantastic. That is actually a fantastic performance. Now, is it true that one person's actions there, OK, well, two people, because I was involved as well, was putting him off? We were licking our lips and trying to put him off. We were trying to increase the probability, weren't we, that he would lick his lips. We were influencing the probability, and therefore his chances weren't independent anymore. We were affecting, we were trying to affect his probability. Now, in life, there are things where we don't have such an influence, where we do have events that are truly independent. Coin tossing. Put your clipboards down. Come up and get a coin from me, a 50p coin. Up you come. I'd like you to choose a coin and find a space. We're going to do a bit of tossing. Choose one of my coins. Dahlia, excellent. We've all got a coin, everybody. Yeah. Right, what we're going to do after three is toss our coin, flip it up in the air, catch it on our hand. Try not to drop it and have a look at what you get. OK, if you get ahead, you've lost. I want you to take your coin and yourself and sit back down. If you get a tail, you can stay up because tails never fails. OK, after three. One, two, three, toss. Catch. OK, what have we got? Heads, sit down. Tails, stay up. What have you got? Heads, sit down and looky. That's a tail. Oh, yeah, it is. Of course it is. Tails. <laughs> tails stay up. OK, tails gather round. Gather round. How have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. OK, we've got eight people sat down. OK, toss two after three. Same rules apply. The second toss. We're going to toss again. One, two, three, toss. Tails never fails. If you get ahead, oh, sit down. Yes. Be honest, sit down. OK, that's two tosses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, let's everybody face the audience, face the audience. Lovely, we have five contestants left. OK, toss three. One, 
two, three, toss. Flipping head. Oh, Get it? Oh, Flip. Yes. Tail. You've stayed in. Any heads? <laughs> Sit down. Unlucky. Three tosses. Good try. No, you can keep it. You can keep it. The fourth toss. The fourth toss. One, two, three, toss. Oh, heads. Tails never fails. <laughs> How many have we tossed so far? Three. Four. four. Got four tails in a row. Wow. We could have a winner here. Toss five. One, two, three, toss. Leave it, let's see. I've got a tail squad one. Tail again. Five in a row. Do you think that's likely? No. no. Right, let's try for six in a row. Okay, one, two, three, toss. Toss six. Tails, tails, <laughs> wow! Are you sure these coins are fair? Right, toss seven. One, two, three, toss. Good flip now. Head unlucky. Tails, we have a winner! Congratulations! I tell you what, that was pretty terrific, okay? Seven tosses in a row. Does anyone know what the probability of getting seven tails in a row is? How are we going to work it out? Okay, we're having a think. What do you think, Arnold? You do half times half. You do a half times a half? So half seven. times a half, isn't that a quarter? No, to seven times. Right, why do you do a half times a half seven times? To get the probability of it. Okay, right, you've got exactly the right idea. The first toss, let's break this down. The first toss is a half chance of getting a tail or a head, isn't it? So we write down the probability of getting a tail, one tail in a row, one tail in a row, is... Well, there's two equal likely outcomes, heads or tails. This looks like a tree diagram. OK. The second toss, of course, gives us four equally likely outcomes. There's only one outcome that we want. Telltale. OK, don't be a telltale. Right. The next toss, that's the third toss, gives us how many equal likely outcomes? Shout it out. Eight. Eight equally likely outcomes and so on. So a half times a half times a half, and keep timesing by a half. Each time we're going to double our outcomes. Seven in a row is a half to the power seven. Who's worked that out? Half to power seven. One over. Who said that? Edward. One over 128. <laughs> that is quite amazing, you lucky person. One over 128. Where are you again, the lucky person? Where are you? Adam, it was amazing. Are you still stunned? Yeah. Go up here. <laughs> you still got your coin? Put it in your pocket. Give it a magic rub. OK, let's try eight in a row. Go on. OK. Go for it. A really good flip. Head. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> I thought we were on a winning streak as well. Right then, on the eighth yeah. toss, on the eighth toss, what was the chance of him getting a tail on that one toss? One in 200, yeah. No, on that one toss. Oh. A half, OK? Because we've had an independent event followed by an independent event followed by another independent event and so on. Past history does not influence it. OK, seven in a row is a half to the power of seven. OK, what's the probability of getting n tails in a row? I'll start you off. A half. Mummy, no? Half to the power of n. Half to the power of n. Excellent. So eight tails in, eight tails in a row. When n equals eight, what's the probability? Shout it out. One over. Eight. Uh, okay, let's calculate it, okay? Two n. A half to the power of eight is one over. 256. 256. Good. A half to the power eight. Okay, I'll do the one over bit. A half to the power nine. One over. Quick, mental skills. 512. Good. A half to the power ten. One over. 1024. I wonder what the probability is that I'll get all those coins back off you, eh? <laughs> uh, right then, let's move on to another interesting, very familiar situation. Here's a dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many equally likely outcomes on that dice, Meg? Okay. What's the probability that you throw a one? One sec. Throw it. Are you feeling lucky? Not really. Woo! <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness! It's a one. Well done, Meg. It was one six chance, you lucky person. OK. Right, then, that's interesting. What's the probability that... Just hold it there for a minute. If Meg throws it twice in a row, 
she gets two ones. From the beginning again. 136. 136, good. So the probability she gets a one on her next go, of course, is 16. But she's already got the one. So let's do another one. Would it be a 136 chance? It's not going to happen again, is it? Oh, oh, unlucky. But the probability of getting a one followed by a one is 136. That is because, of course, we have 16 times 16, which is 1 over 36. 36 different ways. That, that dice can land, OK, when I throw it twice. Let's take two dice. What's the probability that I get a double one, one on one three. throw? Why? Okay. Because they're independent, so it doesn't matter if you do after each other. Exactly, all together, simultaneously. One over 36, fantastic. What's the probability of getting uh, a double six? One over Five 36. 36. OK. More interesting question, then, because you're a bit clever, yeah? What's the probability of getting a total score of seven? That's quite a lot, because quite the different numbers make up seven. What make up seven, then? Come on, uh, do you want to write them up? Two and five. Krishnan, do it. And write them on the board, yeah? Give you a fresh piece. The different numbers that make up seven. I love that. Krishnan got that just right. One and six. That's one way. Two and five. Is he right? Three plus four. Is that it? Yeah. So there's three ways, yeah? So the probability... Yep, yeah, that's brilliant. Three out of 36. Everyone happy? Yeah. yeah. Good, because I'm not. I'm not. Oh, no. oh, Anton, why aren't you happy? Um, because it's I'm not that. simplified. Well, that's good, actually. Yeah, it would simplify to a 12, but mm. that's not the reason. OK, let's look at it. A you one... Do it the other way around. A one and a six, yeah. OK, you could get a one on that dice, a six on that, but you could also get, and this is another outcome, a six on that, and a one on that. OK, two different ways that give you the total of seven using six and one. So actually, the probability is... Six. Yes. Six. OK, which is in fact one over six. six. What's more likely, getting a total score of seven with two dice or throwing a four with one? Same. Same. Equal, one sixth. Excellent, OK. And very interestingly, Seven is the most popular total. It's the most likely out of all the totals. And yet, key question, if I throw these two dice, am I likely to get a seven, even though it's the most likely? Am I actually likely to get it? It no. depends what you classify likely as. OK, all right, well, likely is more than half chance. <laughs> That's exactly what likely is. It's more than a half chance. Is it more than a half chance that I'm going to get a total of seven? No. no. It's not. So it's not going to happen. Never mind. Oh, it would have been nice if it did, yeah? But we can still say that seven is the most likely score. Interesting. Do you know what the probability is, Edward, of winning the jackpot on the national lottery with one line of numbers, one line of six numbers? It's like one over a billion. Something. One over a billion. That's interesting. A billion to one. Yeah, anyone else? You think it's... Does it what, sorry? Right, well, that's a very good, interesting response there. Does it depend on how many people are playing? Your payout depends on the number of winners, doesn't it? But forget the winners for the moment. Good point, and we'll come back to that. What's the probability that with one line of numbers, you get the six numbers and you are a winner?